All right, we are now on to products. So let's hope we're, hop over to the dojo and let's have a look at what we are gonna be going over. So we are gonna be starting off in this left-hand corner here, just like underneath orders, we now have the products dropdown. If we open up the products dropdown, we have inventory, transfers, collections, gift cards, price lists, uh, and price lists. Um, this particular lesson right now, we're gonna go over the dashboard. It's similar to how we went through orders, we're gonna do the same uh, process and procedure with products. All right, so starting off, this is gonna look very similar. A lot of the things in Shopify act and react the same. So you learn it, learn it once and then you have many, many times throughout the software to, to put that into practice. So across the top here, we have our saved views. So uh, if I had, uh, uh, I've created a view where I've searched for Adidas um, and it pulls up all of the products that have Adidas in the title. Okay, now if I wanted to remove this view, you can see this is a saved view. I can click on saved and I can go and remove the tab. Um, and this is gonna remove the view across the top. So if I wanted to go and say pick a vendor, so I wanna pick Adidas as the vendor, it's gonna show me all of the products that are, ta that are, that are set Product vendor equals Adidas. As you can see, it's showing it up here in a little UI tag. Then we can go save filter and we can give it a name. So we can go Adidas. Hit save and you'll see that tab show up along the top. Very, very similar to the way things worked on the orders page. Um, when we look down below, we have our um, our views where we've got our different columns. Uh, now on this particular um, page, you don't have the option to change the columns. You only get these columns. You only get product, status, inventory type, and vendor. Um, you can add more filters. You can filter through your products, but though you don't have the option to add more columns on uh, the product page. So this is this happens in Shopify sometimes where there is not uh, enough of a use case in order to have it, so they clear it out to make the UI a little bit easier. Um, come across the top, um, if we're looking over here, we have our export, import, and add products. We're gonna go into add products on the next lesson. Um, the export button, if we click on the export button here, we have a look, it's exactly the same as what you would have on any of the other exports. They use the same module here. So uh, how this works underneath orders is the same as it works underneath products, and we've already gone over that. Now, the one item that is a little different is the import. So you can go and import by a CSV. Now Shopify here gives you a sample CSV. So if you download the sample, it's gonna give you all the column headers that you're gonna to need to line up in order to import your products. Now, there's a couple required product headers that you're going to need. The first is handle. It's got to have a handle. Um, it's also got to have a product title and it's got to have a product description. Um, as long as those three are in there, it will let you import. Um, but let me tell you from my own personal experience over the last 10 years of doing this, importing through CSV should be a last resort. It should not be a first approach. Um, and the reason being is that Shopify deprioritizes the uh, importance of importing through CSV. So here is a good use case of why you wouldn't want to use import CSV in a production type environment. Shopify will deprioritize the server, server loads available for importing CSV to the very, very bottom of the list. So if they're getting hit with a bunch of orders, so say it's Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and, you, and you're like, all I have to do is import my products through CSV and I'm good to go. And you tried it three weeks earlier, you did all the due diligence and tried it all out and imported it and it took like 15 minutes. And you're like, perfect, this totally sets me up. I need half an hour before I put my thing live. I go and import. Now we get to half an hour before you're going to about to launch and unknown to you Shopify servers have have got a whole bunch of traffic going through them so they've deprioritized import CSV so you hit the import button and what used to take 15 minutes now takes three hours and you're like what is taking so long I'm missing my launch Shopify doesn't give you any feedback on that and it's unpredictable. So you don't know what their load of their servers are doing when you go to import a CSV. And this can really, really mess you up. You spend all this time doing this stuff and then you go to, go to put it in and it's now, it's now going too slow. So my recommendation is if you're gonna import by a CSV, do that in the beginning, but you should really be using the API. And when you're using the API, this is using an app that uses the API to import things, not the built-in import CSV inside of Shopify because it's just it's it's going to cause you more more heartaches than you're than you're expecting. It's great to test some stuff to get some stuff in there maybe as a as a as a as a quick proof of concept. 
Absolutely, it's a great tool to have, but it should not be leaned on as a production level environment. It's just not built for that. Okay, so the next thing we can do is under status, we do have a couple of drop downs like we did have on the order page, which gives us a little bit more information, um, mostly sales channels um, and apps that are attached to that particular product. Okay, you can click on the preview um, button and you won't might not know that this exists, but if you hover over your title, you get this little eyeball. Uh, and what this eyeball will do is it's going to open it up on your online store so you can actually go and preview the product um, straight from the, um, straight from the, uh, what's it uh, straight from the dashboard. One thing to keep in mind, if you are previewing a product, this URL is just a preview URL. You don't want to be sharing this URL. You want to share the live URL, which I will show you once we get into the product page. All right, that's a pretty basic overview for the product dashboard. Next thing we're going to jump into is add product. <laughs> to go through how you add a product, all the buttons, all the things that you're going to need to know that exist on that dashboard.